Welcome to Dropy, where we take your dumb ideas and make even dumber drawings. I'm Jacob. I'm Nathan. I'm Karina. And I'm Julia. And guys, I got some bad news. I uh, I consumed the old blood. Oh, oh, Jacob, we told you not to consume know, the old blood. But it's Every, old. It's old. Everyone said to fear the old blood, but it looked pretty good, and I thought it might make me immortal, but it actually just turned me into a big screaming monster. I'm allergic to old blood. <laughs> <laughs> Nine out of ten people are allergic to old blood, but I'm the other one. Oh, and now wow. I'm a screaming monster. Yeah, that's not the allergic reaction. That's just the, <laughs> yeah, that's just the regular thing it does to you. The only thing I can scream is the names of bloodborne bosses, and then you you all have to draw them. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that works out because we're recording an episode, so. I think let's just do that. It's timed pretty well for what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Great. So, Nathan, I'm going to scream at you first what you're (laughs) going to draw. Nathan, I would like for you to draw Mikolash, host of the nightmare. Mikolash, host of the nightmare. Host of the nightmare. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to give you a little bit of lore. Host sounds fun. Mikolash. Yeah, what a nice guy. It's like I'm imagining a late night host. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. I'm Mikolash. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, he's like the host of a club called Nightmare. Oh, oh that's, that's cool. fun too. Oh, that's what? Cool. Okay. Give me, give me something. Yeah. This give lore isn't going to help you, but I am going to say it to you anyways. Okay. <laughs> Mikolash, host of the Nightmare, was most likely a former student of Bergenworth <laughs> until he went insane after contacting the Great Ones by using the Mensis Cage. Uh, so he used to work at a burger joint. <laughs> burger worth. And, then... <laughs> and what was the thing about Mensa? Mensa? <laughs> he used the Mensa's cage. Yeah, he went into the cage. He went into the Mensa cage, became a genius. Yeah. Uh, continuing on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he contacted the Great Ones using the Mensa's cage. A popular theory about the nightmare of Mensis, and Mikolash in particular, is that all beings found in the nightmare are people that attempted to make contact with the Great Ones. The Mensa's cage placed on one's head traps the thoughts of its bearer. And upon their death, they are immersed into the dream as themselves or other freakish incarnations. Does he have a cage on his head? He does. Well, okay. Well, you, you drew can, you this can, fun face. Yeah, I mean, the cage can be over the, the fun cage face. is sort yeah. of around. Cages have holes in them, so you can so see. So this is, this is Julia's Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, is this Elsa? <laughs> it looks like he's in a little fish tank right now, and I'm very into it. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of the whole theme of the restaurant, the nightmare restaurant. It's a late night show. Oh, late night show. It's a late night show. The combination late night show restaurant. Slash (laughs) Burgerworths. You can go in and order your your beast blood slammers. (laughs) I'm not sure what food that is, but. They're slammers. You know. They're slammers. And he's he's in a slammer. Oh, nice, Nathan. Nice. Oh, it's one of those restaurants where you desperately want plates, but they like serve your food in a cage that you have to open yourself. And <laughs> it's a puzzle you have to solve yeah. before you can eat. You know, like, one of those I restaurants. Just, I have this in a. Can I just have this on a plate instead of <laughs> instead of locked up, please? It's it's like an escape the room, but instead it's an access the food. Yeah. <laughs> and they give you good food, but you got to figure out how to get in there and get at it. Yeah. So it's it's a restaurant. It's not a late night show. It's both. It's oh, both. It's both. It can be both. Okay. Yeah, it's like a you go for the show and you. It's like a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> it's, like a, it's basically it's Chuck where dinner Cheese. dinner is the show. Yeah. <laughs> what late night show do they film at Chuck E. Cheese, Jacob? <laughs> well, you know, there's a show. Okay. Yeah. You got Chucky. You got Mr. Cheese. Yeah. And his all of his <laughs> friends are there, and they do the song and. And you eat the pizza, so it's a, it's a show. And if you're there late at night, it's a late night show. Oh. <laughs> and since this one's like a nightmare club, it's only open late at night. Okay. A Chuck E. Cheese just for the adult. Yeah, it's a very high concept Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, and this guy's here. Yeah. He's the host <laughs> of the late night show. He's the host. I don't know what happened to his neck. It's in the cage. 
It's really big. It's, it's coming out of the it's cage. Sort of, it, well, there's like there's like a hole in the bottom of the cage. Sure. Uh-huh. For his neck to go through. Yeah. And it's sort of it's kind of spilling out. Can I get some more information about this friend or Oh yeah, I can give you more information. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, he's got some some special um, like moves. Oh yeah, tell me about his moves. Well, he's got the shimmy. It's how he walks out onto the stage, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they throw open the curtain. He's there's he's got the shimmy. <laughs> so he's got some moves. He does sometimes. He just punches you. Oh, <laughs> that's um, not a good host. But he also uses this item called the auger of Ibritas, and that makes a big tentacle come out and try to get you. Of it, where? It comes out of him. He like holds out his hand and he like a, a portal opens and a tentacle comes out of it. Oh, hell yeah. And slaps at you. <laughs> and then he's got another one he does called a call beyond. And that's, that's, when, he does, that's when he does his crowd work. Yeah, he calls beyond the stage out to the crowd. <laughs> and a bunch of uh, arcane orbs shoot everywhere. <laughs> he channels the, the power of the audience to get orbs. This dude loves orbs. He loves orbs? I mean, he, sh- he just shoots them all out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what is the deal with orbs? You know what I mean? Like, really? And they're like, I don't know. What is the deal with orbs? And he's like, it's this. And then he shoots a bunch of orbs everywhere. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> Just annihilates the audience with orbs. That's one of the desserts that you can get is orbs. <laughs> and it, when you cut into it, it's like one of those lava cakes where the chocolate gushes yeah, out. Yeah, except it's orbs. <laughs> yeah, it's all or arcane orbs. And they kill you. <laughs> yeah. The they, chocolate they is poisonous, you. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the sad truth about Mikolash is you, you fight him in a, in a dream. It's his dream. And he, he doesn't realize that in the real world, his living body is super dead. Oh. So when you beat him in the dream, he thinks he's going to wake up in the real world. But he's not. He's not gonna. Hate when that happens. Yeah. So sorry. Sorry, bud. Sorry, bud. <laughs> but what a beautiful dream it is. Just look at him. He's so happy. <laughs> yeah, why would we even kill him? Let's get some orbs coming in. Are they like shiny orbs? What are they? What are like they? An olive for a second. Yeah, those, <laughs> those look like an olive. An olive's like an orb. An olive is like an orb. Uh, they're like glowing balls of energy. And they shoot up and they kind of fountain down everywhere. And he can do all these things. But again, sometimes he does just punch you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat the classics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think. I mean. I think this is him. Like, yeah. This I'm is pretty, definitely him. Like yeah. this is. You know. I don't know what else I could do. Why would you do anything else? Yeah. This is him. This is him. Do you want to look <laughs> up what he looks like for real? Yeah. What's his name? Mikolas. His, his name is Mikolash. Oh, it's this guy. Yeah, he's got the the cage. Oh, that's a tall cage. It's to hold all those thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> so many. Well, that's cool. He kind of runs around a big area and, and runs away from you a lot. And he's always <laughs> like giggling and saying stuff. Well, I like my Mikolash host of Nightmare. Yours has charisma. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to go to the, the Nightmare Club. And, <laughs> the and Nightmare Chuck E. Cheese. The Nightmare Chuck E. Cheese and see this very good show that he's putting on for us. <laughs> he's singing you the menu right now. That's how every night starts. <laughs> uh, Karina, are you ready to do one of these things? I'm ready. Okay, Karina. Your character mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. She's one of the raddest characters in Bloodborne. Mm-hmm. Her lore is as follows. Certainly not radder than Mikolash. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a close second. Uh, according to both her equipment and her weapon, Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower was a citizen of Canehurst and is directly related to Queen Annalise. That's a lot of helpful stuff there. Yeah, oh. I know what that means. However, she was one of the first hunters to join the nightly hunt, studying under Gehrman, the first hunter. Despite being a citizen of Canehurst who relished in their extravagant uses of blood, 
She favored her Rakuyo, which required dexterity and skill rather than blood to wield effectively. Rakuyo? What is that? It's like a twin sword. Oh, hell yeah. That breaks apart into two swords. She's a Darth Maul. She's like a Darth Maul a little bit. Uh, All things that mean things to me. (laughs) Yeah. Karina loves Darth Maul. It's her favorite Darth. This lady's a badass hunter? Yes, she's a hunter. 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 But I've got big news about her. Please. At an unknown point in time, Maria forfeited her beloved weapon, tossing it down a well when she could no longer stomach it. What? And seemingly killed herself. Her mm-hmm. consciousness was then pulled into the hunter's nightmare. So when you see her in the game, she's in the hunter's nightmare, and it's like her her ghost. And that's different from Club Nightmare. It's different yeah, from Club it's Nightmare. It's not at the Chuck E. Cheese. It's not at the Chuck E. Cheese. It's at a different no. nightmare. Hunters, yeah. hunters don't go to Chuck E. Cheese because the pizza's already dead. <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> if they can't kill it themselves, they don't want it. They chop it all up with their big saws. <laughs> ruin it. <laughs> ruin it for everybody. Okay. So she is a ghost, a hunter. Does she still have the double swords? She does have the double swords. When you fight her, but is she a not, bad guy? She is a bad guy, kind what? of. What? You have to fight her because she's stopping you from from progressing. But she's not actually like a bad guy. Mm. She's more just like, listen, you don't want to go any further. You don't want to deal with what's coming up after this. Maybe a morally gray guy. Yeah. Um, Billie Eilish's famous song, say. "Morally Gray Guy." <laughs> I would love to hear that. Right <laughs> <now>. Duh. <laughs> 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 yeah she do still got two swords but okay. these, these ones are very bloody hmm. I mean you're gonna get some bloody swords in the hunter's nightmare let's make this nice and bloody I wanna make it goopy Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like That's a- slime Blood can be kind of slimy. Drippy, slimy. I mean, it's a dream. It can do whatever it wants. Yeah. You can't tell me I'm wrong. We're in a nightmare. Most of her moves involve moving really fast and stabbing you with yeah. the sword. Yeah. Stab and stab too. <laughs> yeah. And stab slash. and move and step and turn. Slashes and stabs. <laughs> and then at some point in the fight, she stabs herself with the swords what? Of course. And then she pulls them out and they're like twice as long and they've become like big old blood swords. And then, uh, then her, she has like oh, a bunch more reach. More goop. Now, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> this, yeah. is a goopy, this is a goopy gal. Basically, everybody considers her to be the, the best and coolest character of Bloodborne. I feel like I, I've heard this name before because I do have friends who are into Bloodborne, but I don't remember anything. They probably were like, oh, her, she's the best and coolest character of Bloodborne. Probably. So Bloodborne has two badass ladies. Yeah, it's also got Eileen. Yeah, the I was crow. about to say because Eileen's in there. Eileen's the one you drew in the um, over the garden wall style. That is right? correct. Yeah. Eileen is the second most awesome and cool character in Bloodborne. Cause she, she's already just, where, where should she have stabbed herself? Maybe, maybe like right here. That's a good spot. <laughs> what's, what's a good stabbing spot? Yeah. If you had to choose. I mean, I think that's a good one just cause it's like easy to reach. Yeah. I feel like, you yeah. know, it's and doable. Like a, a dramatic, you know, yeah, it's kind of like where dramatic, you would like, sheath the sword anyway, so. <laughs> maybe she was trying to sheath it. Anyway. Yeah, she, that was an accident. And she just played it off real cool because yeah. that's just how cool she is. It's the next phase of my fight. Yep. You Here have to comes. do that. Oop. It just makes it longer. I get even harder now to fight. Okay, let's give her some cool hair. What do hunters wear? Camo. It's all like, uh, it's all Victorian. Camo. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Victorian yeah, Camo. All, you got to wear the the orange vest so you don't accidentally get shot by the other hunters. <laughs> I feel like this shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> hell that's, yeah, that's Victorian. Yeah, <laughs> now that's Everybody's what I call Victorian. Got a cravat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some more, and then it's camo, <laughs> and the orange safety vest that Nathan mentioned. 
Yeah, that's you, Victorian. Yeah, you don't want to get hunted by other hunters. Can I do the camo in post? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can do I'll anything it, you want in post, Karina. <laughs> I'll change the whole thing again. <laughs> I've been to Academy Sports and Outdoors before. Ooh. That's like hunting, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Sounds like it. (laughs) She's got a deer stand. She got one of them, uh, them like whistles, what makes the animal (laughs) noise. Yeah. She's got a (laughs) duck call. (laughs) She's Lady Maria of the Astral Deer Stand. Yeah. It's really tall and really impressive. There's her little duck call. I love the implication that she hunts ducks with these two swords. <laughs> she chases down duck and geese. Yeah. Oh, you brought a hunting rifle? Cute. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I pull my bloody sword out of my own torso. <laughs> these ducks are flying a little high today. Got to stab myself. <laughs> yeah. Can't reach. Get that sword longer. That quail's not going to get itself. I feel like Victorian corset. I don't know what Victorian fashion is. I mean, I don't either. It is now. Nothing says classy lady like a camo hunting outfit with a corset on. (laughs) Right now, because this isn't post yet, the camo jacket does look like a little like float, like floaty life vest. Like she was on a boat, but they had safety regulations. Yeah. No, that's the reflective jacket for hunting. Ah, yes, okay. Her okay. whole outfit is camo. You'll see in post. Okay. You'll see. I'm so excited <laughs> to see in post. Uh, God. What's? How do I make her look super fast? I guess I should shrink her a little bit. Give her the uh, <laughs> give her like the Sonic tornado legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do I do it without doing that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do not do that. You could do the thing where you like copy and paste the line art and do like after images on either side of her. Like she's- Yeah, she's like tap dancing. <laughs> oh, she's tap dancing. <laughs> she's really She's just scurrying. really spry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagining the sound that Mr. Krabs makes on uh, yeah. SpongeBob. <laughs> That's what she makes when she moves so fast. <laughs> You can tell that this is like the real one. Yeah. I'm behind you. Yeah. You can just always see the after image because she's so fast. She just never stops moving. That's how you show speed. (laughs) It's also how she hasn't been hunted yet. People can't tell exactly where she is. Yeah. She's got a cap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little hunting cap. Yeah. Yeah. This is what you wear at Academy Sports and Outdoors, not sponsored. (laughs) It gets sunny in the hunter's nightmare. (laughs) I mean, what's more of a nightmare to a hunter than getting sun in your eyes? Missing that perfect shot. Yeah. With your sword. With your sword. (laughs) Your blood sword. Oh, she got a ponytail. I think, yeah. You don't want your. You don't want to get your. Yeah. She shops at Academy Sports and Outdoors. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what other things do hunters have i don't know i like to imagine the reverse shot of this is just like a duck squaring off <laughs> for too long you have eluded me <laughs> but it would be like a nightmare duck <laughs> this oh, is this gonna is be wonderful. camo She's so good. Give her some nice gloves because Victorian. Mm -hmm. She need like some sort of cape. Oh, yeah. I feel like that would be nice. Maybe it has like the the thing that the the gully suit. Is that what it's called? Gully gully suit? suit? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. That's definitely it. (laughs) I love that she's wearing a ghillie suit because that implies that she's been hiding in a bush for this duck for like a day. (laughs) Maybe so. It's a nightmare duck. Maybe yeah. it's big. <laughs> it's big and slow. It's one of them horse-sized ducks from the yeah. from the hypothetical. Yeah. It's not a hypothetical anymore. <laughs> yeah, not not in the hunter's nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Enough people dreamed about the horse-sized duck and it Yeah, manifested. and then you showed up and scared away her horse-sized duck she and now waiting. she's going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, this is all I've got. <laughs> this, this is great. Is yeah, it's very You've done good. It. Love is, it. Is this Maria? <laughs> this is Maria. This is Lady Maria. You've captured her essence perfectly. Yeah, I feel like this is her vibe, <laughs> me, probably. <laughs> How do you yeah, solve look, a problem like Maria? Look her up. See She's what so she's all really right. like. Lady Maria Bloodborne, count me in. Okay, I've seen her. I didn't remember her, but I've seen her, and I think I'm pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, you are close. Yeah. Energy. Similar She's pose. wearing a hat. Got the swords. I did, in fact, give her swords. And a long, like, capey cloaky thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's That's there. her. It's like the same character. <laughs> it's yeah. like looking in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> this is like an alternate skin that they release in yeah. like a DLC. Only if you get the... Bloodborne battle pass. And <laughs> Only if you shop at Academy. <laughs> Save up your, your blood bucks. <laughs> the Bloodborne Academy crossover. <laughs> My dreams. All right. I did it. Wonderful. I did Karina. a Bloodborne. <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, it's time for old Julia. Me. Julia, your Bloodborne boss is... Moon presence. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> you already did it. <laughs> Great job, Julia. <laughs> the moon is indeed present. You captured Aww. moon presence very well. <laughs> yeah. That's a flower. Oh, it's that's a cloud. Oh, no. It's a cloud. He's so cute. Wow. <laughs> Julia. What? Oh. Is that a neck? Oh, he's strong. Oh, he's a very strong. He's strong. Oh, I love a strong That moon. feeling when you think you're looking at the moon, but it turns out it's just a very strong man with a round face standing in front of you. <laughs> that's no moon. That's moon presence. <laughs> um, okay. Give me some deets. Don't gonna... delete it. Leave oh. it on its own layer and save it for later. You might, might need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the great ones in Bloodborne. The moon presence controls and manipulates all that resides within the hunter's dream. The moon presence's origin is largely unknown. Before being encountered by the hunter, the moon presence had bound Garman, the first hunter, to the hunter's dream, an outlet seemingly used by the moon presence to further its own desires, mainly involving the killing of the other great ones. So moon presence controls the hunter's dream, and he's got hunters in there sending them out basically to go murder all the other great ones. And is the hunter's dream is different from the hunter's nightmare? Yes. Wow. Uh... The hunter's dream is a nicer spot, so you think, before you realize moon presence is controlling <laughs> it. Wow. I hate when that happens. Freaking moon presence. I'll give you a bit of physical description just because this sentence is really funny to me and how vague it is. Okay. An eldritch being composed of human flesh and bone, with the exception of its head, but it doesn't go on to say what the head is composed of. I mean, it's clearly... It's, the moon, but a presence it's of a, it. It's a moon presence. Oh. Yeah. Essence it's, of moon. Look at that. Oh, I like that. That's cute. It's just a little moon presence. Don't worry about it. He's shy. He's like, Aww. don't don't look at me. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm controlling everything from the shadows. Stop. <laughs> Who, oh my me? god, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just go kill the other great ones. Don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Oh, no, don't don't kill me. Kill the other great ones. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I think it's, it's even funnier when you know that this is the the true final boss of the game. <laughs> <laughs> like if you do everything right to get the the one ending the, of the three endings that lets you fight moon presence, this mm -hmm. is what you get at the end. What do you I have mean... to do to get moon presence? So you got to find these things called one third of an umbilical cord. Mm. And it's the umbilical cord of a great one. And you have to eat them. Oh, okay. And if you eat three one thirds of an umbilical cord, thus yeah. having consumed a that whole makes umbilical sense. cord, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're you're granted sort of the arcane knowledge that lets you perceive what's going on and uh, summon down the moon presence. 
Otherwise, you don't know what's going on. Interesting. And how do you get the, the thirds of the umbilical cord? They're hidden <laughs> all about the game world, Nathan. You got to explore the game world. Wow. Some of them are in tricky spots. So if you don't eat the whole umbilical cord, Moon Presence just gets to keep hiding. Yeah. And you don't even know. Yeah. That's why he's so coy when you finally find it. Yeah, that's like, why oh. he's like, oh, you didn't <laughs> think you'd eat all three thirds of the umbilical cord. That's I gross. can't believe you did that. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> oh, no. Why would you eat it? You didn't Why would know that be the thing you'd think to do with that? <laughs> That's weird. gross. That's weird and gross, dude. I'm embarrassed for you. This pose implies that like you found him like hiding in a closet <laughs> somewhere. I was whispering to my underlings. <laughs> he was underneath the bed the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> This is just such a cool design on top of it being a very adorable pose. Is he like tiptoeing? I don't know what he's doing. I, I think I imagine him floating. Yeah, it looks like yeah. he's doing a bit of a float. Okay, yeah. And he is doing a bit of a moon as well. Yeah, yeah. I wanted him to be mooning a little bit. <laughs> That's why he's moon presence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted him to really just exude moon energy. Mooning, the moon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm... I'm getting this it. This is big moon times. <laughs> big moon times is his second form. <laughs> I don't know exactly how he fights you. What are some of his attacks? Yeah, what game? are some of his attacks? Uh, he kind of just like whips your ass a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. He's just, he's really, his attacks are very quick and like erratic and he moves around very fast and kind of just goes nuts on you. Mm -hmm. But then... At 50% HP, you guessed it, it's orbs. Oh, yeah, it's orbs. <laughs> he starts casting orbs that explode into blood. I like that. And then he also has got a big AoE shockwave that will reduce you to one HP. So clearly, Moon Presence has been watching the late night show with Mikulash. Yeah, got, got some ideas. I mean, yeah. it's, a popular, it's a popular show slash restaurant. Yeah. It's like, ooh, I love these orbs. I also love the implication that I've done that you have to fight this man naked. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it just be like that. Sometimes it be like that. Sometimes, he's, <laughs> he, I mean, uh, he's always in a pose, though, that covers like his junk like this. Yeah. 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 He just kind of reaches out with his arm and like swats at you. <laughs> Is this um close? Is he like big? Does oh, he have clothes? Uh, he's not. Th this, I'll tell you right now, this isn't close. <laughs> Oh. But I do like this a lot. This is a very fun design. It looks more like a persona. It does look like a persona. <laughs> I'm uh I know these are like like rays coming out, but I am reading them as hair. <laughs> <laughs> They're all standing up because he's so surprised yeah. that you found him. Oh. <laughs> You've located me. <laughs> Twas I, the presence of the moon. I was doing what? Oh, you noticed. You noticed. Did you kill all the other great ones by any chance? You did? Oh, that means that's good, but also it means I guess you're going to try and fight me now because it's the end of the game. I'm the real <laughs> boss, it turns out. Whoopsies. <laughs> Bloodborne loves a wispy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love a wispy. I love a wispy. Oh... Like a wispy cloak. Yeah. This is at once like so cool and so funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> so orbs. So I feel like. <laughs> so orbs. So orbs. Yeah, that is, uh, that's one of um, uh, Mikolash's like favorite transitions, like when he has a guest on. Like one of the one of his classic questions that he always asks is he goes, So orbs. <laughs> so you've got a new album coming out. What do you you got any orbs on there? <laughs> on the on the album? What do you mean? I just love talking about orbs. <laughs> this guy's got orbs. Oh, this guy's got so many. Much much many orbs. This is a pretty cool drawing. Yeah. Thanks, I'm Very designy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I just moon presence. How can I not do something 
Oh, it's got some like they're like orbiting. Yeah. Oh hell yeah, they're orb orbs in orbit. Yeah, I think you'll find when you see the real one that the name Moon Presence is less descriptive of its appearance. Okay. And more descriptive of the fact that it was the presence that was in the moon, and then it came out to kill you. Oh. So should I have drawn like the man <laughs> on the moon? No. Sort of. Oh. Uh. You'll see. You'll see. He's a he's a skinny little moon presence man. Yeah. I think <laughs> so he's great. cute. I think yeah. this is perfect. I love him and I hate him. Yeah. As as it should be. Yeah. Well, this is moon presence. Yep, it sure is. Do I'm gonna look wanna, him up. Yeah, look him up. Look up the moon presence, please. Oh. I think you got kind of close. He's long. He's he is long. long. I and missed a tentacle or two. Yeah, I think a critical misunderstanding was that his his body's made of of human bones and oh, flesh, but see, it doesn't look like a human body. Right. See, the image that we're looking at for this this boss does look like a gyro meat thing <laughs> that they cut the meat off. Of. Yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> you just want to shave off meat. some of those bones. Yeah, and one stick of them those yeah. bits. And the um, head the head is just a, a mess of tentacles, huh? Yeah. Yeah, just there's an eye in there too somewhere. Oh well, that's cool. I drew uh a very Legend of Zelda tingle meets God knows what. That's why I like it. It's got tingle energy. Some bayonetta <laughs> maybe in there. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this is my moon presence. I love it. Excellent. I think work. it's great. Good job to all of you, and good job to me because I pooped out the blood that I ate. Oh, oh good job. that's and what I, you were doing while we I, were recording. Yeah, that oh. explains all those faces you were making. Mm. I turned back to a, a normal man who has eaten blood in the past, but no longer. So, huh. congrats to good me. Job. You did it. That just like in the game. <laughs> just like Every, in the game, everything goes back to normal, <laughs> and it, and it's all fine. And you, the hunter, goes back to high school. Yeah. Yeah. At the end. He, yeah, he, gets, he gets a date to the, the big dance. <laughs> um, this has been Drawfee. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like what we do, consider supporting us on Patreon. We got some fun rewards depending on how much you pledge. You can, you can go ahead and leave a comment of what you'd like to see us draw next time. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when our videos are coming out, watch us on Twitch. We stream on Twitch every Monday and also other days sometimes. That's true. Mm -hmm. And from from everyone here at the uh, at the Hunter's Nightmare, we're sorry. 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 <laughs>